In the last section, we started talking about this write to file function that we're going to use to persist a deck to the hard drive. We then spoke a little bit about the second argument, which needs to be of type byte slice or a slice of bytes. So now it's up to us to figure out how we're going to take our type of deck and somehow reduce it down to a byte slice, which is essentially a string. So honestly, if we can figure out some way to turn our slice of cards or our deck type into a string, maybe we won't be that far off from figuring out how to get a byte slice. Okay, so here's a strategy. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to be making use of a process called type conversion with Go. Type conversion is used to take one type of value and turn it into another type. We do type conversion by listing out the type that we want, a set of parentheses, and then the value that we have. So for example, we can turn the string hi there into a byte slice by writing out square brackets byte, which is the type we want, the parentheses, and then the string hi there. As a quick example, let's just write this out inside of our existing project and just see what it looks like. So I'm gonna flip on over to our code editor. I'm gonna find the main.go file. I'm going to comment out all the existing code that we have inside of here. And then right underneath it, I'll declare a string of how about greeting, and I'll give it the value of hi there. And then right underneath it, we'll do a FMT print line. And I'll say, take the value or the variable greeting and turn it into a byte slice and then print it. So we'll say slice of byte, and I want to turn greeting into a slice of byte. So I'm now gonna save the file. We'll flip back over to our terminal and run go main go. We don't actually need deck in this case, so we'll just say go main go. And then when I do, here's our log statement of the actual byte slice that hi there got turned into. And so that's how we do type conversion. And we're going to see a lot of type conversion as we go throughout the course. Because as you might imagine, there's many cases, many situations in which we have one type of data or one type of variable, but we need to kind of massage that type into something else so that we can make use of some existing function that expects some other type. All right, so that kind of gives us a little bit more of a clue on exactly how we're going to get a byte slice out of a string. But still, that doesn't really answer the full question of how we're going to turn a deck into a byte slice. Okay, so here's essentially the flow that we're going to go through. At this point, you and I have a deck. That's what we have right now. We have a deck. And we want to eventually turn that into a slice of bytes. So we're going to take our deck, which is really a slice of strings, right? We, we set up that type already inside of our deck.go file at the very top, we had said, yeah, a deck is basically a slice of string right here. So we're going to take our deck type, we're going to turn it into a slice of string, we'll then take that slice of string, which is an array of strings, and we're going to join them all together or smash them all together down into one single string. And then we can take that string and turn it into a byte slice. So that's the process we're going to go through here to turn our deck into a byte slice. Now this might seem a little bit confusing at this point, especially if you have not worked with a statically typed language before, but honestly, this is something that the first couple times you see it, it's gonna be a little challenging, but eventually you're going to really figure it out pretty quickly. Usually all we have to do is visualize, okay, this is the type we have, this is the type we want, how are we going to get from point A to point B? Usually not that bad. Okay, so let's start writing some code to actually make this happen. Now, I think that probably the most challenging thing here is to somehow turn the deck into a string. So I think that rather than stuffing all of this logic into a single save to file function, right? Rather than stuffing all of this logic into the save to file function, it's entirely reasonable to imagine that we might have some other case in which we need to turn a deck into a string. So I think we should write a little helper function that takes a deck and returns a string. So if we ever need to turn our deck to a string again in the future, we'll have this function close at hand. So let's flip back to our code editor. I'm gonna find my deck.go file. I'll scroll on down to the bottom and we're going to define a new function called toString. So this is going to take a deck and return a complete string representation of it. 
Now you might be wondering, okay, well, Steven, we're going to make two string here. Why don't we just go all the way and do something like two byte slice, right? Why don't we just make a function that does the entire shebang, everything from a deck to a byte slice? Well, hey, if you wanna do that, that's totally fine, go for it. But like I said, I think that it might be more common to imagine that we might need to turn a deck into a string. And once we have a string, we've already seen that it's really easy to turn it into a byte slice. So I'm gonna say, hey, you know what? We're just going to kind of arbitrarily say, I want to be able to take a deck, turn it into a string. And then if we need to turn that into a byte slice, hey, no problem, we'll take care of it at that time. Now, the next thing I wanna think about is what type of function signature are we going to have here? Well, without a doubt, given that this thing is called toString, I think that it's definitely going to return something of type string. So I'm gonna say, I'm gonna give it a return type of string. But then what's a little bit more interesting is, are we gonna set up a receiver for the deck or should the deck be passed in as an argument? And you'll kind of notice back up here with the two functions we already put together, we've seen an example of both approaches. So we put together print, which took a receiver of a deck, and that's what allowed us to call like cards.print. And then we also set up a completely different function, which took in a deck as an argument. Now, if you have been going through the quizzes, I kind of mentioned the fact that, yeah, you know, we kind of did not use a receiver here on deal at all. And that kind of didn't match up too well with the print function up here. And like I said in the quiz, this is something that we're going to kind of talk about later on about why sometimes it seems like we're using a receiver and then sometimes not. Now, again, this is something I want to talk about in the future, not quite yet. But for right now, I think that we can safely say that something like a function to string I think that really makes sense to tie as a receiver function to the deck type. So we're gonna place a receiver of D deck. So in other words, at some point in time, we'll be able to call cards.toString, like so. Okay, so inside of here, we're going to take this deck and somehow turn it into a string. So this section is kind of running a little bit long right now. So let's take a quick break and then come back in the next section and figure out exactly how we're going to turn a deck into a string. So I'll see you in just a minute.